Welcome to the Pride Against Prejudice podcast, a Shadowrun 4th edition actual play podcast. I am Simon. I play Bertha Huggins, aka Huggy Bear. I'm Al, or Draenor. I'm playing Mav or Maverick. My name is Les, and I will be playing Murin. My name is Jack. I'm going to be playing Poiger. Hello, I'm Michael, and I'll be playing Sunshine. And my name is Ridian. I am the GM. If you would like to follow our runner's journey through 2072's New York, please feel free to check out the link to our living campaign map in the show notes. Additionally, if you would like to submit any new locations or create background information for any of the districts, details on how to submit this can also be found in the show notes. The following content may contain themes and material not suitable for all audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Last time on the podcast, the team have broken into the community centre to extract their target, but the silence was shattered, first by soup, and then by ten machine gun rounds to Muren's chest. It's time to pay the butcher's bill and get out of here. Happily enough for you, as we start turn two that Huggy's going first in Gretel. What would you like to do? Right. Um, I am going to shoot this gentleman here. Okay. Uh, He's on the ground, so I'm going to say prone target, so you will get a plus two. And he doesn't get to roll, because he currently has other problems, like the fact that he's a twitching mess. He's just pissed himself. What, like, his nervous system isn't exactly functional at the moment? Oh, no, no. Opponent prone is only for melee, so you don't get the bonus, but he can't defend himself, so roll it. Only plus two, then. Alas. How will you cope? Yeah, that's seven hits. What was this? Was this a burst, single shot? Um, This is a short, narrow burst gel round. That'll be 14 AP plus one... He's very unconscious, and he's also just had his nose spread across his face, and his glasses have shattered, and he's just kind of lying in a puddle of his own piss and gel round. Yep, that's what he deserves. So yeah, he's out of the fight. Turning and seeing the, um, what I d- definitely recognise as a rigger cocoon, um, Huggy is going to say, guys, get that thing open now. All right, are you doing anything else with your turn? I can't really do anything else with Gretel at the minute. Huggy herself is going to start scanning the surrounding area for any approaching drones. Okay, so give me a scan roll. And I'll be dropping out of hot sim for Gretel. Uh, I believe that is a simple action, so you'll be basically to change focus. Yeah, I can't remember the proper term for it. So yeah, you you change where you are. That as your second simple action. You won't be able to roll a scan roll this turn, but that's fine. I'll be next pass. Yep, Mav. Mav follows up Huggy's instruction by saying, Murin, you're on the pod. And then I'm gonna start sweeping these side rooms of which there are six you have a look inside them all pretty quickly i'll just say you've got enough movement to just check all of them yeah just kicking the door in uh, as not even a free action just you can just i do in fact have enough movement to get around all of them without even running yeah they're just like tiny little bedrooms there's nothing interesting in them fine um there's some rumpled bedclothes and some dodgy BTL porn chips and that's about it. Yay. Lovely. Yep, that's your turn, which puts us on Spirit of Beast's turn. It would see that there's like astrally a thing with a soul in there. So it's no rigor cocoon. It's gonna just it's gonna assume it's like sick or deformed or there's something wrong with it, so it's not gonna pay a great deal of attention. Yeah, it's also its instructions were to basically to attack things that attacked you. It has, yeah. as far as it is aware, that has not ta- attacked you yet. If there's no other things for it to do, who's the most injured? Mav. I'm gonna say it goes over and just like head bumps Mav a little bit, like cats do when they want attention. Just he's not doing anything. He's not got any instructions to follow. So, you know, it's a very spiky head bump. 
Yeah. Huggy, could you give me your Matrix defense roll, please? That's only two hits. That's not great. You always have edge. Yeah, I'm going to edge that. Yeah, that's a lot of better. Five hits. All right. And could you also give me an analyze roll, please? Certainly. God, zero. No hits. I am not doing well in the Matrix today. Your, your comm link is beeping at you in a weird way. You can't work out why. It just, it's just beeping. It shouldn't be doing that. Uh, Sunshine, your turn. Yeah, uh, I am currently VR goggles on. So last time I wasn't able to find any other Matrix users. So is it, is it Analyze to find them? It's Analyze, which is the equivalent of Perception. I got one hit there. You still can't find this bastard. Ugh, is that a complex action? I'm going to say simple. You can try again at a, at a negative one. Yeah, I'm going to try again. Just... Zero. So... We are terrible at the Matrix today. Yeah. It would seem so. Uh, so yeah, that's Sunshine's turn. Mirren, your turn. Uh, just to confirm this thing that I'm looking at. Can I open this? Is it like there a button on the side or something? You can, there's like an emergency open button. It's designed so that if somebody's in there and gets their brain fried with biofeedback, you can slam the emergency button and get it open. I take my little pinky finger and I slam it. Okay, as you do, it hisses and opens, and you find that there is a dude inside. He's kind of skinny with lank, greasy hair, and he's got a collect. He's got a collection of data jacks on one temple. He's got half of his head shaved, but the other side is kind of like lank, greasy, thin, blonde hair. He looks a bit skinny like he's not been eating properly he's got bags around his eyes that kind of stuff and Dr. Decker. he's also still in uh, cold sim vr well i am nothing if not a quick learner and i believe i've seen this done before so let's yank that wire all right so i need to look up the rules for dump shock again it sucks this is not the first time we've done dump shocked somebody nope nope and yes i just realized now i haven't been doing the accent i'm sorry Ouch. So the dude screams ah! and just sits up, clutching his face, and just blood spurts out of his nose and his ear. That's normally not a good thing. Nope. He, he looks very unhappy and confused and has no idea what the hell's going on. Uh, I'll say that that's your turn for the time being there, Miren. Oh, I wanted to punch him. Yeah, unfortunately, that's a complex action. You've already taken a simple action. I was about to ask you out there. Of open and then yank. Uh, so that'll put us on Doiger. What are you doing? So I'm going to wander into the room, just over to like the cocoon or cradle or whatever, or whatever riggers hide in when they get sick of the real world, and just sort of peer down in at this sickly little freak that's living in there. Leans over the thing, points one finger at him, and says, Hi! And then force four stun bolts him for five hits. All right. Four of which I'm keeping. Oh god! So he's got to resist nine. This guy is going to die. Fuck. Hi. We probably want this guy alive. He's reeling from the dump shock, like reeling forwards, clutching his face and trying to stem the blood coming out of his nose and his ears. And then you just come up to him and go, "Hi, stun bolts," and he just. <laughs> reels back, clutching at his head and screaming, and then bangs his head off the rigger cocoon and s starts just squirming on the sort of bed that's inside the cocoon. He's not out, but he really wants to be. He wishes he was. He's conscious? Yeah. He was hot sim, so he took physical from the dump Oh, truck. yeah. Uh, I'm going to roll to resist the brain now. All right, so uh, that puts us back around to the beginning of pass two. Right, so based on the fact that we just had a rigger down there, I'm going to start looking for what he was rigging, so he might just be a spider. Yeah, so there don't seem to be any drones or anything like that. It, hang on, he's a rigger in a air-gapped system. That's weird. 
looking at the cocoon, there's like wires coming out of it and going all around the place. It seems to be a wired in system down here. Yeah. Um, but it's still, is this, is the rigor cocoon not still behind the air gap? From what you can tell, the cocoon is wired into everything within the bunker, but the bunker is air gapped from everything else. So, Huggy, what are you doing with your turn there, buddy? Based on the fact that we are probably very soon going to be jumping out of here, I'm starting to prepare our escape route. Okay, so that puts us on to Mav. What are you doing? Is that the only unswept door in this place? Roll me a perception check. In fact, actually, Mav can't see it yet because he's still checking he's the doors. He's not been into that room, uh, but I've used eight meters of my movement. I still have two. So, yeah, you can just walk into the room. Beast Spirit has moved, uh, so I can now occupy its space. It's very upset that you walked away from the head rubs. I <laughs> pat the beast spirit on the way past. You are forgiven. <laughs> um, and roll that perception check. What? You're in a room. You're in a room full of medical equipment with zero hits, and a rigger cocoon with a guy who's screaming in front of Tiger and Mirren. That, that's about all you can tell. It's the beast spirit's turn. I'm just going to assume it's still rubbing up against. <laughs> Uh, Mav shredding his trousers with its uh, porcupine spines. And purring so loudly you can feel it in your chest. Sunshine, uh, what are you doing? At this point, are there really any threats left? As far as you're aware, there's you've, you don't know about the Decker going offline, I think, at this point, because you didn't find them. So Sunshine's still in the Matrix going, Where is he? Where is he? That being the case, I'm going to roll up two two more analyzers and see if I can find anything. Hey! Three hits! Finally! Alright, so with your analyze, I'll say that that happens just as he winks off them. You spot him just as he goes offline. And he was in Huggy's pan. Oh, come... Uh... You also see a number of icons for... It's all wired in. But you can tell that the cocoon basically controls the medical beds and things like that. And it's also used for... It hooks up to the data storage systems in here. What the f*** is this place? It's like straight out the fucking 2040s in here. Like, wires? Really? Really? Did... Did, did Crash 2.0 mean nothing to these fraggers? <sighs> And then, since I've just seen him getting yanked, then I'm going to hop out back into meat space, basically. Uh, you go back into meat space, sort your initiative. Uh, we can drop out of initiative at this point. So, what do people want to do? Well, first of all, I want to know what's... We were expecting this to be a safe house. Is this what one would expect in a safe house, all these medical beds. Roll me your safe house knowledge. You're getting the feed from Gretel so you can see the place. Von hit. Uh, from what you can tell, the beds, they... and the crap around them, it looks a little bit like the stuff that you've been around the last time you were in a safe house and you got shot. But some of it as well looks a little bit like there's some... Is that a pair of cyber eyes in a dish over there? Those are doing surgery in here as well. Well, if that is a pair of cyber eyes, somebody grabs them because they sell. I will not be grabbing those. I would like to check out that last door, though. It's basically just a store cupboard when you open it. There's, like, f tinned beans and, the med and some basic medical supplies and stuff like that in there. It's... Oh, there beans and I'm in a closed place like this are fucking monsters. They're racist preppers. What would you expect other than tins of beans? Rid, you see these, these medical bed things? Are yeah. they, like, open-topped, or are these, like, sealed sort of medical, almost like regular cocoons? They can be used in both ways, but they've got, like, robotic arms set up around them and stuff like that. From what... Roll me... Do you have any knowledge skills relating to the Matrix? 
Matrix, no. I think the only one I've got that would be immediately re relevant would be metahuman trafficking, depending on the what exactly they've been doing here. Are the are the five beds obviously empty? Oh yeah, yeah. There's yeah, there's okay. no there's nobody in them at this point okay. in time. Uh, they they do have like robotic arms that have like surgical implements on them attached and stuff like that. Ah, that's probably what the rigor was for. Um, see those cyber eyes that are lying out. Are they new, or do they look like they've been? Are they second hand? They seem to be in like the foam case. Interesting. It's like a plastic case with foam in it with like a clear cover on top that they're sat in next to one of the beds. I'll wander over to the very sad looking rigor. He's clutching his uh, his nose and his skull and just going, Oh, oh God, oh, what the frag? What? Who the Does frag? Want to oh. subdue that guy for transport? He's still lying in the bed, yeah? Can I lift him out by his skull? That would be being, being more delicate than I think he deserves. I mean, yeah. I mean, he's a pretty sp spindly guy. You can pick him up. No bother. Anybody need this one for anything? So as you pick him up, it, he just he just lets loose with this string of racist invective, just calling you fragging troll, fragging tusker, go d die in a ditch of drek, yada, yada, yada. It's... Yeah, it's it's. You kiss your mother with that mouth. Good heavens! It probably does. Well, I'm currently holding him like a pinata. Who wants first go? Oh, he doesn't even have enough dice for that. So he's sort of trying to kick you in the nuts, but just flailing. Sunshine reaches into. She's got like a little messenger bag kind of thing on her. Re like reaches in, has a bit of a rummage. Uh, Pulls out like a Ziploc bag, but it's like uh, it's not transparent. It's like a solid grey plastic one. Unzips it and pulls out a ball gag and a pair of fluffy handcuffs. Sunshine learning all sorts about you. That'll work. Hmm, you never know when they might come in handy. And I cuff the guy and yeah, uh, shove the ball gag in his mouth and strap it around the back of. Now, see if you weren't being a screaming racist piece of drag, this wouldn't be happening right now. He's he's still kind of trying to shout at you around the gag. Guys, let's find the server and let's get out because we don't want to be standing around any longer than we need to be. Oh, right. Yeah, shit. Do, do we actually need this guy for anything? Yes, we get an extra. We get extra if we bring one in alive. And this one seems the most intelligent. Sunshine, could you give me a logic roll, please? And you too as well, actually, Huggy. Nah, none. Nope, none. Oh, star characters. <laughs> so you both rolled a zero. You're in a room with a rigger cocoon, some medical beds, and some big ass servers. Can I roll trying out smart, smart characters? I don't believe they are the smart characters. Please. In fact, everyone, just everyone roll logic, please. <laughs> I only have three dice on this. <laughs> That's a zero. <laughs> Zero! Jesus Christ! <laughs> so, Mav, Mav crit glitched. Mav is currently looking at the medical beds going, well, this this guy probably knows it, so we should cut his skull open and get it out, right? Uh, <laughs> Guys, there's a box here with a sticky label on it saying main server. Is that important? Uh, yeah, that's why we're here. Well, the main server seems to be wired into the rigger cocoon. Is the whole place just running off this rigger? Yeah, he's basically yeah. a spider. But sometimes looking around at like all the cables and just going, this this drek is ancient, man. Like some of this belongs to an antiques market. I mean, the, museum. The fragging USB C. What's a USB C? I've read about these. I was someone who knows how the fold bastrel works. Do we need to take? Why is half your hardware from the fragging thing? Do we need world? to take the whole cocoon, or do we just need the little shit from inside it? The cocoon just lets him interface. We don't need that. All oh, right, okay. We just need the 
sort of a rack and the body. Oh, we should get moving. Let's let's take what we need and get out. Right, Murin grabs a rack. Oh, I'll grab this guy. Somebody take the server. Yep. Yeah. Grab those cyber eyes. We can probably sell them. Wait, what the hell is happening to the Matrix feed? Hang on, is some corporate decker hacking my feed? One moment. Hang on. That's not a corpo decker. Who are you? Oh, wait a minute. That's the Bug City Blues podcast. Good day, citizens of Chicago. This is Oakley Wildwood, your anchor at Goldleaf News Network, bringing you the latest developments from the heart of the UCAS. And now for the news. The Chicago Containment Zone is witnessing a surge in kidnappings that has left the city on edge. Travel in groups for safety, folks. A good crew could be what gives you the edge to make it to your next paycheck. The streets are witnessing a spike in vehicle thefts and carjackings, leaving everything from jackrabbits to delivery trucks as smoldering, bullet-ridden scrap heaps. Lone Star PD advises secure private parking whenever possible. But in Chicago, even the safest of places can become a battleground. On a more hopeful note, the ghoul communities of Cabrini Green are uniting, driven by a hunger for justice. Vigilantes targeting infected citizens have been escalating tensions, promising violence if they do not leave the city. Those sympathetic to the ghoul cause have offered support by providing donations and offering security, though officials assure that they seek a non-violent resolution to the conflict. There's a lot going on in 2080s Chicago. Stay informed, stay safe, and stay with us by tuning in to Bug City Blues, a Shadowrun 6 World Edition actual play podcast wherever fine podcasts are found. Now, back to your regularly scheduled programming. All right, restoring the feeds. Oh, come on, guys. Your show's awesome, and people should go listen to it. But really, hacking my feed? I am so getting you guys back for this one. And that's the feedback up. You can just let him interface. We don't need that. All right. Okay. We just need the server rack and the body. Oh, we should get moving. Let's let's take what we need and get out. Right, Murin grabs the rack. Oh, I'll grab this guy. Somebody take the server. Yep. Yeah. Grab those cyber eyes. We can probably sell them. If you want to start a museum to the fifties, feel free. Uh, frankly, half most of this not even worth the scrap value for the copper and fiber in it wired into the servers you do see a fair light joyeuse that's that was like bleeding edge in 2050 but what the frack is it doing down here well i mean a bbc micro was bleeding edge at one time <laughs> <laughs> doesn't mean i want one ragged rocks tied to sticks were bleeding edge at one point they still are if you have scores them hard enough how big is the server? So it's basically a rack of um, modules that are about laptop sized, just all shoved in in a stack. How big is the rack? Uh, there's about five or six of them in there. So five or six laptops, that's not particularly heavy. Yeah, Mav grabs the actual like servers out of the server rack, stacks them up and starts carrying them towards the door. There was another guy who we knocked out, right? We should probably bring him as well. We only got paid for one. We haven't killed any of them unless the toxin kills them. Uh, I'm actually going to say the one that was venomed. He, he's now... When you next see him, there's white froth coming out of his mouth and he appears to be making choking noises. Oopsie. Oh, grab bad mohawk. Do we want these guys able to tell their friends that they saw us? Yeah, I reckon we take it. We take everyone. No, we don't take anyone. We take one person and leave corpses behind. We take them out. Yeah, because where do we put them? The van barely had enough space for all of us coming here. But I don't suppose Murin's going to want them in his car. Valid. Your car has a boot, right? So, while this is going on, Poiga, could I get a, a perception check, please? Three. So you're kind of bored whilst they're fiddling about with screwdrivers and you just go, oh, what the hell, I'll just check the astral. And 
you see a guy appear on the astral who's looking at you and just who just says the frag are you doing wave to the nice security mage you're astrally perceiving but you're not actually projecting at this point does has he noticed me noticing him yeah, i'll say yes so what does he look like on the astral what am i seeing it's light and color you're not seeing a body you're seeing an aura so this person is astrally projecting i'm going to ascend him okay go ahead one hit so they are in good health they're a little confused and quite angry uh they appear to actually be female um that you're getting from the aura they are also what's your magic rating my magic rating is five they're about as magical as you are. I'm going to now roll to remember what was spoken of at the start of this thing. Okay, so roll a memory check for me. Nout. Not a clue. There's just somebody who is magical and angry with you, and they're now saying, stay where you are until the officers arrive on scene. I don't suppose me saying this is criminal on criminal violence is going to convince you to look elsewhere, is it? She looks at you and just says, if you were astrally projecting, I would pa- I would power bolt you in the face right now. I'm not astrally projecting, so you cannot get to power bolt me in the face right now. Is Tiger talking out loud? Yes. She does, however, give you a, a grin and say, no, but I can do this. <laughs> Could your beast spirit roll its body for me, please? Zero hits. So, yeah, it's just taken five five physical. It's dual-natured, so she can hit it. Oh, you bitch. So, I'm going to scream to everyone, we've been had, someone knows we're here. Grab the shit and let go. Tell you what, it'll hold her attention if nothing else. I'm going to try and summon a force force spirit. Okay, go for it. We'll just assume that the beast spirit and she are just having a bit of a blarney while you summon up another spirit. I get plus three because i've got conjuring focus yep go ahead i'm gonna summon a force for spirit of beast and i've got six hits there it got two hits so you have four services please resist four drain seven hits okay so yep you're fine for the drain as another beast spirit appears what are you telling the beast spirit rip the bitch apart Ooh, violent all right so this one it seems to be summoned up from the creatures that live down here because there's things that have burrowed in to feed off the rubbish that inevitably gets left in the back room before it gets cleared out and more gets put in there. And it seems to be an amalgamation of... It looks to be mostly rat, but you're not sure where the rest of it is from. This thing just screeches as it jumps at her. There's probably, probably some raccoon in there. I take it you're all legging it, taking your shiny new Decker friend with you. And our racket servers. I grab the submachine gun off the destroyed drone on the way past. Can I do a quick perception and see if any of the other... Actually, I'll grab any guns off the dudes who we downed. If I will work those out after the run. Give me an edge roll, and we'll say that's how many guns you get is how many you roll. One hit. All right, you get a white knight on your way out. Nice! So Sunshine's got this thing by the carry handle, like, lugging it around like a bragging suitcase. Going, oh, God, these things are so heavy! No shit? <laughs> You guys all bundle up the ladder and leg it across the uh, community centre, back out the door, and Huggy's just in the in the van. You can hear the speakers on the van from Huggy just going, go, 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 as you all pile into various bits. Gross, 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 schnell, got the golf. All right, medic, back in your box. <laughs> Yeah, could I get a driving roll from both? To, oh, are you finishing uh, the Humanis runners off on your way out? Or are you just legging it? Are we not taking them with us? You don't have enough hands. You're taking the Decker. What Are you doing anything with the rest of them? I can carry one. I don't think I can carry all of them. 
Mirren is carrying the rigor. Uh, Sunshine is carrying a machine gun. Mav was carrying a stack of server racks. Huggy's not here and her drones can't carry anything. Toiger, you have hands free and you don't need hands free. Are you killing any gangers on the way out? Uh, yep, I've got my knife. I'm just gonna... Shink. I will deal with cat's displeasure later. <laughs> you just slit a throat or two on the way out. Just a quick stab to the carotid and just keep running. So you will pile into the vans just as you're starting the engine. If I've not had the engine running... Uh, just as Mirren is starting the engine and you're starting to GTFO, uh, you're just getting onto the road and just starting to get up to speed when you can hear the sirens. Fortunately, you've just about gotten away with it. Mav, could you give me a, your police procedures as a knowledge roll, please? Absolutely. Uh, this will be patrol as well, won't it? Yes. Because they are first response. Four. That... M- that mage was quicker on scene than they should have been for a B-rated area. Yeah, I was not expecting us to actually meet the mage. That was... Mm. So, are you telling the others this, or are you just keeping it to yourself? I'll wait until we're definitely clear. Alright, could I get a driving roll from both Huggy and Mirren, please? Certainly. That's uh, three hits for Mirren. Yep, so Mirren... And Huggy, you screech out the car park and onto the road and you get yourselves up to speed pretty damn quick. You briefly see a little flash of blues and twos as you go around a corner, but you lose them pretty fast after that. You head into the Flatlands slum nearby, chuck yourselves around a few different blocks, hide in an alley for 10 minutes, drive casual after that. Yeah, you've lost them. So, that was our drop-off. Sorry about your drone, Huggy, but I got you a present. What is it? You're actually driving, right? You've your hands on the wheel. No, Huggy is in the in the uh, regular cocoon in the back. Uh, turn on the in- internal camera. Yeah. The prize! Is that a fucking white knight? And is that the... Ah, you've managed to get the gun from the... Uh... Oh, yeah, you. got you. Yeah, got the submachine gun off, so you can have that back. And yeah, white knight with uh, d- 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 ninety rounds of ammo. Looks like Not exactly was that. Present. Thank you. I imagine you probably had a bit of difficulty getting up the ladder with those, but you somehow <laughs> managed it. I mean, sunshine is a hot, sweaty mess right now. <laughs> <laughs> Like, full-on, like, running down her face into her eyes level of, like, t-shirts change colour around the back. It's not pretty. When we get to the drive casual stage, Mav is going to bring up the um, interesting information he worked out before we do the call. Based on what I know of security response, that mage showed up way too quick for a B area. We should have... We should have had way more time than that. There's something going on here. So, are we thinking NYPD Inc. have members in... Of course they fragging do. Of course they fragging do. Of course they do. Racist police officers. To quote an old song, some of those that run forces are also those that burn crosses. Police officers with racist sympathies. Good heavens. Oh my stars and garters. Yep. <sighs> Right, we've got to drive extra careful on the way to, uh, to the drop off then. Tiger, can you make sure that mage isn't floating around behind us? Can do. I'm just gonna sort of sit in the lotus position with the inner eyes open. Yep. So she doesn't show up. The spirits seem to have kept her busy enough. Who's making the call? Probably me. It is your job. So. Phoning the num the burner phone you were provo- provided by Margaret, it goes straight to voicemail. I can't meet you in person, as I'm required for public appearances. Please drop off your package if you have one. Well, the living package if you have one. With I believe you dropped off some last night. If 
you could do so at the same place, please. With the other more delicate package, please leave meet my sons at Ronaldo's Cafe and Bistro overlooking Maria Hernandez Park in Bushwick. I recommend the cannoli. They are excellent. And the line goes dead. Uh, I had that on speakerphone, so... Well, Huggy, Marin, you know where we're going. Making track. Back to the car park. Uh, I suggest drop drop off the noisy fragger first. Sure, let's take the package there. All right, so you drive to the parking garage up in the Bronx, well, South Bronx in Port Morris. At this time, you're met on the gate by Sons of Sauron member who just says, just hand him over here, we'll take him inside. There's no need to bring him in. Right, get a track out of the van. We hand over one guy in. Are you taking your um, fetish gear back, Sunshine? Yeah, I'll, I'll wait for the Suns guy to zip-tie him. The orc kind of looks at you, taking the bull gag off him, and says, Really? What? It was an interesting night. Duct tape, duct tape exists, you know. I wasn't carrying duct tape. He looks at you and thinks for a moment and leans in quite close and says, Can I get your number? <laughs> Uh, yes, but complicated. He gives you a toothy grin and says, I can be uncomplicated. Tell you what, you can have my number. He looks you up and down and says, Sorry, bud, not my type. I gotta be open to new experiences. Guys, could we stop with the flirting and going to get on with it? We are trying to get on with it. Less getting it on, more getting on with it. Those are the same thing. One thing you were also given was a time to meet in Bushwick, which was about 9am. It's now early hours. Does anybody have area knowledge? New York. No. That's one of the ones I'm going to pick up. Does anybody have any area knowledge? No. Nope. All right, you've no frag and clue. It's early hours now. Are you doing anything between now and the meet? What sort of early hours? Is it like... It must be about two in the morning, because that's when we were doing the hit. Uh, you've had to do the drop-off, so it's probably about half three in the morning. Sleep? We can get, like, five hours in a coffin motel. All right. If anyone disagrees with this, Mav suggests it, it in will character. Sleep in the cocoon. We do need sleep, but I want a word with the two spirits that are sicked on that cop first. Your bound spirit um, has been... It's been pretty badly messed up and it's gone back to the astral plane and it, it's not entirely happy with you right now. The other one has just disappeared back into the astral. They got killed. <laughs> it's the, the spirit that you summoned managed to get away, but it's, yeah, it's gone back to the astral for a while. It's not happy. It'll be okay, but it needs a bit of time. Where are you heading to go to? to a coffin motel. Are you going to a particular area of the city? Well, see if we can't find anywhere in Port Morris. There's a shitty, shitty coffin motel. Uh, when you crawl into the coffin pods there, they co kind of smell musty. Um, one of them has a slight ammonia twang to it. Ugh. I'm glad I'm glad I'm sleeping inside the cocoon. Yeah, Sunshine takes one look at this place and then just decides to curl up in the, in the back of the van. Like, with the drones. Mirren, could you, Toiga and Mav, could you all give me five body plus, I believe it's body plus willpower to recover stuff? I stun? believe it's body plus willpower. Yes, so each time you get hit, that'll recover you a box of stun. I rolled three for all of them, so that's my stun damage clear. Yeah, I took three arrows to heal up. All right, so you, you get a decent night's sleep. Are you doing anything else in the coffin motel? I'm imagining this coffin motel has like a shower cubicle, which like the toilet folds back into because it's in the same space as the, the coffin motel, and you have to insert a fragging cred stick into this thing to make the hot water start running. You have to insert a cred stick to make the toilet seat unlock. <laughs> 
so that you can actually lift the lid. Dude, what kind of dystopian nightmare is this? I don't want to play anymore. Not in Warcraft already. This is a dystopian nightmare. There are limits to what I will endure. Just quickly, um, how much stun did I recover? You've all you've recovered all of it. Happy. You're fine. Yeah, you're all feeling a bit better, Mirren. You're kind of looking sadly at the holes in your suit, going, oh, "Do you know how much it costs to find a good tailor?" I'm gonna bring some plastic booties on the next job. I'm now imagining you in one of those going in to kill a bunch of gangers, but wearing like one of those plastic tourist ponchos to keep your suit clean. <laughs> I was ima imagining is you know those those blue overshoes that they make you, make you put on your shoes when you go to the swimming pool. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, him just him wearing them. <laughs> Like, or when you're going to view a house sale, like, I was thinking of that because two jobs, both times, my boots got dirty and nothing else. Do you know how much a good shoe shiner costs? Tell them. You all pile into the van in the morning and driving into Bushwick. It's another step up again from Crown Heights. The front of the classic New York brownstones are still there, but rearing out of the back of them are huge, glittering steel and glass luxury apartments with VTOL taxis and delivery drones zipping between them above the streets. The streets are clean and well swept with obvious NYPD Inc. Foot, po foot patrols everywhere and happy upper mid-level corp scientists and citizens going about their day. And for once, the AR feed here is clean and orderly, except for the occasional advert for the cafes showing you their menus, or a pop-up about one of the air taxis. As you pull up outside the cafe, you see Margaret's sons sat at a table together. You could hardly fail to see them, given they're the only orcs here, and getting nervous looks from the other clients and the waitress. One of them is tapping at an AR keyboard and staring intently at something on his feed. The other is thumbing through what looks like a political science textbook heavy enough to beat a troll to death with. Any of your guys feel really, really out of place here? Yep. I used to work with these people. You poor fool. Felt like good for you, I guess. Right, let's get this over with. Shall we send the, just the humans or shall all of us go? As you're watching, Lucas, the the larger of the two, who seems to be looking through the textbook, he's ordering himself another coffee. These guys were orcs, right? Yep, they're both orcs. Well, I'm good. Um, Huggy's going to get out of the cocoon and stretch a little, pop out the back of the van and head over to them. As you get out the van, the one who has the AR keyboard glances up and just kind of gives you a wave. He reaches over, gives his brother a quick nudge with his foot, and then reaches over and drags over another one of the sort of steel chairs that they've got sat outside the cafe to the table. Yeah, Huggy will go and sit down with them. I'd like to go over to... Hi, how's it going, guys? He looks you over and says, very well, thank you. One moment before we, before we discuss business, do you want to get yourself uh, a coffee or anything? It's on, it's on us. Do they have any non soy versions? Certainly then. I would have our. She looks at the um, menu. What the hell? I'll take whatever you're having. <laughs> he says, They've got an actual Italian coffee maker in there, and its actual coffee is pretty good. What? I have never tasted actual coffee before, so this will be a first. Okay. All right. So you normally have soy calf. Are you, do you normally drink, drink it with milk, or do you normally drink it black? I drink it with milk and, and sugar. I'm a heathen, I know. We'll get you a macchiato. Thank you. Dean waves over the waitress again. Is anybody else getting anything? What time is it? It's about nine in the morning. Uh, way too early to start drinking. Sunshine will get a black espresso. Yeah, so it comes in sort of a, one of the tiny, tiny espresso cups. And once you've all got drinks and if you're getting any food or anything uh, that arrives I've advised the can alone so let's try that Lucas uh, the larger of the two who he looks like he's played a, f a few seasons of rugby or something like that he's got the cauliflower ears going on and his nose looks like it's been broken and reset at least twice 
sets up he seems to be the slightly quieter of the two sets up a white noise generator and sets it running and says right we can talk properly now go on dean you get on with it you're better at this than i am and dean smiles and says so i hear there was some trouble over in crown heights last night i hear there were several deaths i'm so concerned I, uh, yes, I understand that there's been some sort of commotion. I was out for a drive last night and it went perfectly well. It's rather unfortunate, isn't it, when such things happen. However, I'm told that you have a delivery for me. Indeed we do, indeed we do. Uh, Mav? Mav hops out the van with a stack of server blades. Lucas kind of takes the bag from you, unzips it glances inside, shrugs, and hands it to his brother, who l- takes a data jack and plugs it into his neck, plugs it into the one of the servers, and Lucas kind of looks at you and shrugs and says, he always takes a while doing this. Hey, Kirby, know where that's been. We left an interesting package with some associates of ours, which was the rigger who ran the place. We heard. They're, um having aggressive negotiations as we speak. Well, I hope that everybody gets out of it just fine. Rav gets back in the van. <laughs> Unlikely. Mum can be slightly squeamish about what needs to be done. I, on the other hand, have fewer functions about it. Glad to hear it. I find that many of the older generation tend to be a little squeamish. Mum means well. She's done all right by Dean and I. More than all right. And she's done more than all right by a lot of other people's kids as well. She's done more more than all right by me so far. She might be my mother, but she's not... She's not a drug. She didn't have to deal with it growing up. Yes, she had her own dreck to deal with. Yes, she had... Hmm... Mal got shunned quite hard for having Dean and I, but she still isn't an orc or a troll. She hasn't been through what we have been through. No, and I'm not saying she hasn't had her own dreck, but it's different dreck. Right. So she doesn't always understand what needs to be done, as you say. Yeah, it's a shame but it is how the world is. Indeed, and I hold no grudge for that. As I say, she has done more than all right by me and many, many others as well. And at this point, Dean kind of uh, opens his eyes and says, Excellent. This is exactly what we were after. He pulls out a napkin from his pocket and puts it on the table and says you'll find what you want in there if you want to check it you will find that it is all as agreed okay we'll pick it up and inside is a cred stick with the agreed upon amount he hasn't stiffed you it's got your bonus plus what was agreed for the server rack dean glances at you both and says we'll need to go we need to get this back is there anything else before we go i will finish my coffee and my whatever this cannelloni thing is. Keep me posted, uh, or keep us posted. Let us know what you find on there. We've uh, got an interest in this as well, yeah? As you can imagine, yes. This is a case that's interested for us. Lucas looks at you both and says, there's our contact information, and hands you a card. Thank you. We'll, we'll let you know if anything comes up. Thank you. It's going to take us a while to go through this lot, though. I can imagine. That is quite a lot of information. Pleasant day, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the cannelloni. Mum does like this place. I can see why. And they stand up and they head over to a car that's parked nearby, get in and drive away. Congratulations, you've just made it to the end of the first mission of the campaign. We did. Excellent. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thank you for listening to the Pride Against Prejudice podcast. We hope that you enjoyed the show and look forward to seeing you again in two weeks' time for our next episode. Intro is More Human Than Human by Carl Casey 
and the background music is also by Carl Casey. Outro music is Neon Thrills by Luck Hash. All sound effects are from freesound.org and credited in the show notes. The Tops Company Inc. has the sole ownership of the names, logo, artworks, marks, photographs, audio, video, and or any other proprietary material used in connection with the game Shadowrun. The Tops Company Inc. has granted permission to the Pride Against Prejudice podcast to use such names, logos, artwork, marks, and or any other proprietary material for promotional and informational purposes on its website, but does not endorse and is not affiliated with the Pride Against Prejudice podcast in any official capacity whatsoever. All other works mentioned in this podcast remain the property of their respective owners. The Pride Against Prejudice podcast is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 license. So if you want to use any part of the show, please give us the credit.